Welcome to Two Balls and a Mic, episode 123, 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 23, here on a beautiful Monday. It's hot. I'm sunburnt. We're all sunburnt. Are you really? Uh, yeah, I really you am. You wearing sunblock? I was, but we're here with Two Balls Underwood. We're going to go ahead and talk with Alan Underwood, who was also a little sunburnt uh, after he was over at the season ticket holder uh, meet and greet mm-hmm. with the players of San Diego Loyal. Unfortunately, San Diego Loyal did drop two points over in New York as they tie with Baby Bulls. They did come back and flip the script, guys. They tie and get a point over in New York, and now they're going to go ahead and play against Corey Herzog on June 11th in Torero Stadium. We're going to go ahead and talk about what should we expect about that match here on Saturday and a homestand. We're also going to talk about San Diego Wave. San Diego Wave remained in first place in the NWSL. What? Eight goals in seven games. Eight goals in seven games for Alex Morgan, the best player in the world. She is absolutely kicking ass. We're also going to talk about international games. Mexico vale para pura madre. Mexico just lost. They got destroyed by the Uruguayan team that tied 0-0 against the U.S. men's national team. Ukraine and Wales. Bale is going to make it into the World Cup. Argentina the best team internationally. Oof. They they they're the best. La finalissima, bellissima. Yeah. We are here on a Monday. We're gonna go ahead and say thank you to Calafino Tequila, Calafino Tequila, Acafino Calafino. Get your twenty percent off Calafino Tequila using promo code Two Balls yeah. Twenty. That's two B A L. We should be throwing that link on our link tree. Yeah, no, we definitely should. We are going to definitely do that. But first, we're gonna go ahead and say hi to the great and powerful Alan Underwood. What's up, Alan? Alan, how are you, my friend? Pretty good. How are you guys doing? I haven't seen you in a while, man. I'm 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 kind of happy with how like I maneuvered all this uh, technology right now. After I'm very absolutely, much proud of you. After absolutely fumbling it for the first five minutes with uh, Nate, and I'm you, gonna. You have guys to should some... see this guy at work today. This guy was a rock star at work today. I I have a, a so sunburn. You uh you and your technology were very much like loyal this past weekend, where it was a little bit touch and go at the beginning, and then you rallied and and finished strong. A couple fumbles here and there. Uh, yeah, and, and and again, you kind of come away with a net, not positive, not negative, but a net, eh. Um, what did you think? I mean, obviously, let's talk about a little bit about this past game here in New York, but just in general, right? They've had a couple of games on the road. They're coming back here to play on Saturday against Hartford, but what did you think about this last run of away games? It, it was, a, it was, it's been a while, man. We haven't seen them since April 16th here in San Diego. Alan. Yeah, I mean, I think if we if we start after the Open Cup match, right, and we kind of take a look at that run of games, uh, you know, it starts out with a, a rally win in Tampa Bay, which gets everyone excited, and then they pick up points in three of the next four away matches, right? Um, yeah, the New Mexico one ended kind of poorly. The LA Galaxy in one ended up kind of poorly. Um, but I mean, if you flip the if if every game was like Red Bulls where they came back and scored the, the tying goal uh, to make these draws, you'd feel differently about these three road draws and a loss. Um, it's not the, it's not ideal, but I think if we compare, you know, this run of five away matches to the beginning of the season last year with that run of four away matches where we got zero points getting three, four, five, six is, uh, it's pretty good, right? Like, you have to feel a little bit better about where this team is on the road. Um, they're, they're scoring goals, right? They're not, they're not getting shut out on the road. Uh, they're scoring multiple goals for most of the matches, right? Um, you know, held to the one against New Mexico, who surprisingly is really good defensively, which hasn't been historically the case. I think New Mexico is one of the better teams uh, in the USL championship as far as uh, goals allowed. They've only allowed nine goals in 11 matches, right? So uh, pretty strong defensive uh, team. Uh, the low, the, you know, we talked about the LA Galaxy match, but then you, you go on the road to Baby Bowls. You think it's going to be a, a cakewalk because Baby Bowls have not done historically well this season, but then they announce the starting lineup and you have a guy like Hayden Clark who is starting for and and, or subbing in for their mls team Mm -hmm. um and and red bulls are a good mls team right they're i think third or fourth place in the eastern conference like this is like this is guy getting minutes um not like consistent minutes he's getting minutes for a a competitive really good team in the red bull system and so when you see a guy like that on the starting sheet you're gonna go okay well this might be the difference between 
Red Bulls who have been in pretty much every game they've been in, right? They've lost by one goal, um, one, two, three, four games of the last seven. So they're in pretty much every game that they're in. So you see a guy like Caden Clark on the lineup and you think uh, this is going to be a little bit bigger of a test than I think a lot of people anticipated. Yeah, you have a 19-year-old that's just – has a bright future ahead of him, and then yeah. just he's bound to tear it up in the USL if he's getting minutes. So is this because of the Landon factor? Is this because everybody wants to show so up when Landon too. Donovan shows up? Maybe. Like what? No. <laughs> yeah, like what? This, what? Why? This is because there's an international break in the MLS, oh, and so man. all of these two teams now have guys who are who need minutes, right? These guys are, you know, Caden Clark isn't the start uh, a starter per se. Um, so you, you have guys who need minutes and you're playing in the big stadium, right? We saw that against, um, you know, LA Galaxy. You see this now against Baby Bulls where they're playing in the big stadium. Baby Bulls. And they're going to send some kids down who need minutes who are MLS guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we, we've seen this a lot in the USL, not in COVID. So I think San Diego fans haven't quite gotten this taste before. But this used to be a pretty standard thing where if the big club is um, – if the big club isn't playing or is on a break, they're going to send some some pretty substantial players down. Uh, I think Sacramento is on the the, the losing end of this um, in 2018. I think um, this is what two teams used to do. They used to, if they're on a break, they would send these these bench guys down, and it was the competitive balance was significantly different uh, than a normal game, uh, which say what you will like there's complaints with the usl about competitive balance you look at the new mexico game against phoenix uh, you look at the tampa bay versus uh loose city situation that there's just some inconsistencies in the league right now and i think with the two teams uh you're seeing the last bastion of this element of the usl where mls teams can essentially just loan guys down for the week for free um and change the landscape in which teams are competing which you know, is a little unfair, but I mean, you got to beat the team anyway. Right. And I think loyal has a good enough team where they should be able to be competitive against some guys who are, who are bench MLS guys, uh, because you got some of those guys on your team, you know, right. Alejandro Quito is probably in that conversation. Kyle Martin. Vassell is probably in that conversation. Koke yeah. Vegas is probably in that conversation, right. Colin Martin was an MLS player. So it, it's not really an excuse. It's just it, it changes your expectation when you know you're playing up against a much stronger side than you would have imagined uh, like 24 hours before the game. Yeah, and I mean, like they, they controlled the game. They had possession. I mean, uh, we spoke to – I mean, are we allowed to say that we just spoke to Yeah, Nate no, 100%. Earlier? Yeah, we, we, uh, I announced it actually on uh, Discord, and I had cool. a couple questions in there from the Discord. So that was pretty neato. But um, but he mentioned you have Amon coming back and he's just an absolute baller, right? He's he, whether he's coming off the bench or starting, he's just tearing it tearing it up. And then Landon said in that post game interview that he did, he said, "Hey, you have Amon who didn't maybe have the best performance against Galaxy. He wanted to make that up, and he definitely made that up and made his mark again." Very, very true. And, and but my thing is again, still kind of like what you were saying, Alan, is that we do have the the, the players to compete, and regardless, I feel that. You know, maybe the chemistry isn't there, but maybe that's super, that the talent of the individual supersedes uh, the chemistry that's needed. But again, it's not like basketball where one player necessarily changes the dynamics that much. I still think San Diego Loyal should have had the opportunity to come out with three points from this match. Obviously not how it played out, but like on paper, even if you did tell me, hey, there are some MLS level caliber players here. There's some, there's a kid that's going to go to the Bundesliga that just signed, you know. <laughs> that, that, sure, I, I get that, but... Um, either way, I think that there is a, an extra element whenever Landon is on the field, and, and that's just – it is the way that it is, even for referees. And, oh, boy, did we have a good uh, talk about referees with Nate. Uh, <laughs> so that's yeah, going to come out. I want to make sure you check that one. That's going to come out on Wednesday. Um, but, yeah, so here already in the in this game, in the 28th minute, it's like 2-0. Um, so I'm so, oh, I'm so upset because I was at work, and I was yeah. cooking up hot dogs for the sixth graders. <laughs> it was the last day in my program, so – I just see Alan text, what the fuck, or this, this, and this. And I'm like, what? What's going on? And I check 2-0, and I'm like, holy shit. Had to watch it back, everything, after after leaving work. But, man, to just, I don't know, just look at your phone. You're expecting 
a trashing from San Diego Loyal since we t- had talked about it from the pod mm-hmm. to them being down 2-0 in the first 30 minutes. I was shocked. I was in disbelief, but I could believe it as well if that makes any sense. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yes, Nate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and that's the thing, though. Like, there is obviously we won't talk about the positives too in a bit, but there is an, a negative uh, with uh, Coca Vega for going down. Oof. Austin Guerrero does come in, make an outsta- makes an outstanding save. Um, he actually DM- DM'd me this morning. He's like, "Hey, uh, if you want some goalkeeper gloves from Aviata Sports." Use my use my promo code, Tony. <laughs> I know he literally. And like, that's when you slide back. Hey, do you want some fine Calafina tequila? <laughs> Use the promo code. Use the promo code. <laughs> Two pounds twenty. Uh, uh, but hey, so Austin Guerrero posts. Uh, he shares on his Instagram after the game. It's not really talking about the game, but that one of his kids that he trains, watching my coach play on an actual game. Oh like, yeah, that's dope, right? Yeah. That has to be dope. Yeah, I'm sorry, like yeah. you don't get to see that in any other professional team. Austin Guerrero, Austin is Austin's a hard dude. He's a hard motherfucker, straight up. But that, he's a softy. He had, he had a he had a shed a tear there. He a little, had, little, little he's tear. a softy man. Are you a softy for your, for for the for the students, Alan? I mean, yeah, you have to be right. Like, no. if you're not like, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure my kids. <laughs> I'm not sure my kids. I'm not sure my kids know that, but like, I do like care, and it's like when you. Yeah do something cool and they're like in amazed of in it or they get to see you like do something that you've been like teaching them like and they see you actually do it and they can see the passion and how much fun you're having yeah of course and with like a guy like austin guerrero like coke vega is like checking out his hammy yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna say vega every time uh but you 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 have that feeling of like everything's great everything's fine like, it's not like you're putting in an untested backup keeper. And it's not even like, I wouldn't even consider Austin Guerrero like a backup keeper. He's like the 1A, right? Like, he's a guy who could start. Yeah. So it's like, hey, if you feel anything, like, get off the pitch. Make, keep it, like, 10 to 15 days. Don't stay out there and really do some damage where we don't get you for two weeks because we got a guy who can come in and do a job. Um, you know, I talked to Koke. His, his English is getting much better, which is, is great. Um, he, he's like English is much better, uh, and he said, you know, hey, like I'm, it's gonna be it's gonna be a close to see if we're gonna be in this game against Hartford, mm-hmm. but which tells me that he's probably like they'll probably go with Austin Guerrero this this weekend just to be safe. Yeah, but then it's back to Koke, right? Like it's he it's it's not as bad as they think, and I think that it's probably gonna be right up against it, and so I would like them to be a little bit more cautious and just be like. We, we'll roll with Austin Guerrero because we know what he can do and we know the job he can do and he's going to do a great job. So why put someone at risk? Uh, we saw this with Guido too, right? Like you pull him off because you know you got guys who can who can do a job on the yeah. team. There's no need to leave a guy out there to risk further injury um, when you know you got guys who can step in. So it, it's a good problem to have. Uh, and you know Austin Guerrero is going to be ready to go. Like he, mentally, he's 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 in it. He's ready to go. He's hungry. So like I I'm excited to. I'd be excited either way. Either Koke starting because he's healthy, mm-hmm. or Austin Guerrero is getting the start because he deserves it. And you know Koke might not be ready to go, but we have you know one A. And if Austin starts on Saturday, this is going to be a game where he wants to prove himself. Last time he started at home, he did get scored on five times. Very against true. Louisville. Very so true. this is going to be a game for motivation for him to come in and say, you know what, last time this happened, it's not going to happen again. It's a, sta- a statement game. Corey Hertog has never faced Coke Vegas. He's faced uh, Austin Guerrero plenty. Austin Guerrero in training. So uh, just keep that in mind. I mean, dude, uh, who else to play mind games against Corey Hertog than Austin? <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. Um, but back to this Baby Bulls game. Um, it was not looking good in the first half, 2-0 down. Um, but speaking of injuries, uh, a player that's coming back from an injury, Tomas Among, who has yeah. been just vital, just as as important, I'd say, on the field as Kyle with Vassell the hair was. Down this time. With the hair done, uh, ver- hair down, no. a very, very interesting maneuver by him and his hairdo uh, department. But he comes in and uh, immediately makes an impact. Good cross here, laid off by Guido, and just the hops and the strength and the wherewithal to head it into the net and, you know, start this comeback, this team has been needing Thomas Hamang 
incredibly desperately. Mm -hmm. If Thomas Angmong had been on that field in Galaxy, that would have been a win. RGV, well, maybe a tie, well, some maybe of the, a win. Some of the best games Sandy Olo has played this season have been with Kyle Vassell and Among up on top together. And they were is they were starting to experiment with that mm -hmm. actually because they didn't start that way. It was it was yeah. Vassell, then they boom switch Among in there. And then they're like, okay, what if we play these two together? They started doing very well. They started starting together and that was working out well. But then Thomas goes down, obviously. And I think that had a lot to do with uh with the amount of games that they were they yeah. were all playing. Obviously you had Among go down, you had Carlton also going down because he was run down for a couple of games. Um, but it's good to have these players back. And, man, did San Diego Loyal need Thomas Among, not just in this game, but just back in also, general. Another player that needs to if, – if this player is healthy and, needs, and he needs to start every game, and that's Nick Moo. Yes. Nick Moo hasn't gotten a start in two games, whether it's due to – You were saying something about Among, Allen. Sorry. Cause, oh, go yeah, ahead. Sorry. No, you're fine. I was, just, I was just saying, like, uh, he allows um, – Kyle Vassell to drop in a little bit more like and it gives a different look to the team right like Kyle Vassell up top can be dangerous right like the next highlight is him kind of getting run uh, getting a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and putting it just wide um, but it allows him to play a little bit differently where you have the defender having to defend one-on-one -on -one against Vassell allows the space uh, further up the pitch for someone like Among um, I like the way the kid plays. Um, it, he's super fun uh, to watch. I think him coming in after halftime where the where Red Bull is maybe a little bit tired and a little bit on some wobbly legs and he's fresh. I think we've seen him do that kind of uh, do that to other teams before, but it's really nice to see him back out there. Um, and I think, we said uh, every time he scores a brace, we need to have a a party afterwards. And so that's why they had a party on Sunday is because yeah. he did so well. So next time we're going to do a Hattie, they're just going to – San Diego's going to shut down. It's just going to be like Absolutely. businesses <laughs> close. Everyone's going to party because they're going to hit the Hattie. End the season right here. That's it. Uh, but, yeah, like you mentioned how he comes in against Tired Lick. That's something Landon has mentioned before, right? Kyle Vasso is the player that's just going to run down on the defense, getting tired, and Amon comes in and just – it's the dagger. It's the finishing touch, and it's worked out before, and it's great that he's back and scoring goals. I was speaking about Nick Moon. Nick Moon is a vital piece in this team, whether he's playing right back or just a wing on top. I like Evan Conway, but I'd much rather have Nick Moon starting. I don't know how you guys feel about that one. I'm pretty sure you guys agree with me, but I'd much rather have Nick Moon in the starting lineup than Evan Conway <laughs> at this time. Why not both? What can oh. Ooh. Okay. Right now, give me your ideal 11. Yeah, uh, exactly. Injuries in mind. Go. Oh, man. So, it's, okay, it's we tough. don't know if um, Coke is going to be out. But no, no, no. Well, injuries in mind. Right in now, we're going to assume that probably Austin is the most Are we doing this to together? Mm. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, sure. Like, right now, going to the next match, I'd probably, I'd probably start Austin, Austin. Guerrero. Mm -hmm. uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't rush Coke. I think Elijah Martin... Uh, Kyle Adams, Stoney, and oh, I'm. I might start. I might start Metcalf and give him like a sixty minute, and then put Nick Moon in because I think for the same reason among like uh, you have because uh, Nick Moon did some did some Red Bulls dirty this weekend uh, coming in late. Uh, obviously, Kyle, uh, Colin Martin, Adams in the middle, um, and then you can play. Uh, let's see how many positions do I have left Four. Um, I think you can put Conway on the, or nope. Who's going to be on the right. Cause Conway uh, likes to play on the left, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, poop, 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 maybe Martin. And then this, nope. This is where I disagree with you where I would start Jack Nick moon on the right. And then yeah. if you get to sub out Jack Metcalf, you drop Nick moon back moon back. And then yeah, I actually like that. Put Nick Moon in front of Martin, and they can do some overlapping fun. Put to me on the on the left with M, uh, and then maybe you put in uh, you put in Among and Vassell up top, and then you can swap in Conway. Uh, I'm not sure Among has a full ninety in him yet, so maybe start Conway up top with uh, Kyle Vassell, and then put in mm -hmm. Among for maybe run him out for forty five minutes this time. No Guido. Um, Injured? Yeah, that one's tough too. Uh, yeah. That's some, why. Give him like, some rest. 
Yeah, maybe. But you need to start like, winning. Like you can't. You. I mean, you'll win at home. You should win at home regardless of who your 11 is with the players that you have against the team that you're going to play think, with at home. I think for this Here's one, you'll leave Conway out. You start Toomey right behind Vassell, and then you play Guido also in somewhere in the mid. And then you have Nick Moon. Um, it'll be interesting. Good thing we're not the coaches. Good thing we're not Nate yeah. Miller. <laughs> yeah. Because your, your front four last match was Conway, Vassell, Toomey, and, and Guido. Yeah. So um, you're saying swap out Conway for – Nick Moon. Moon. And then just kind of flop where people are. Put Moon on the right where Guido was. Put Tumi on the left and run Guido as like yep. the, uh, like a 10. Yep, yep, yep. That's that's what I'm trying to That's not to a bad shout. And then Evan Conway can come on uh, for a sub. You can drop Nick Moon in for Matt Calf. I want as many players minutes. that have played with Corey Herzog starting in this game just because – uh, it's it's the mental thing, right? Like they want to chat away, we'll contest yeah. their way. And and what I'm saying is they're gonna play with balls against him. Like they're not gonna want to lose to him. Yeah. And then I think another sub I think that might be nice in there if you're if you're up. Uh, Nate Miller talked about this too. This that person has that edge. Um, and I think Jack Blake is yeah, one of those Blake. guys who has a little bit of that destroyer edge in him. That if you're up, that's a guy you want in your midfield to 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 do a to do a game against Hartford and kind of close it out, hard crunching tackles. He needs to uh, score a banger being for physical. his confidence. Yeah. Man. He needs a banger for his confidence boost. I feel like injury, like he's getting to where he needs to be like physically fit mm -hmm. and healthy. I think it's confidence playing a big factor on him where he, he knows his shots there, but he needs one to go in just to boost that shit up, man. Yeah. And, and we saw it it's like a watershed moment for him. So, uh, we have a comment here by 619 Soccer. Is Metcalf starter more because of le leadership on the field or on-field product? You know, I've always said that Metcalf's like a crack. And no, no, you hate not Metcalf. A, no, I don't hate Metcalf. Uh, I just uh, think words, on mind. the field he hasn't been as productive as he maybe was the first season or yeah. has rate. been before in the USL. I do think he is there for leadership. I think he does play a big factor communicating on that back line and just on the, on his side. I think he's very dominant. His presence is dominant on the field. So it's, it is key to start him in a game like this, especially the first game back at home. He's one of the OGs for this team, right? He knows what yeah, it's, it's like, like to play at Toro. It's like, do you want a right a defensive right back who can play offensively, or do you want an offensive right back who can kind of play defensively? That's kind of the difference mm -hmm. between the Nick Moon and the the Metcalf. Why not both? And because <laughs> those players don't exist in the USL. Uh, if you have someone like that, they're playing in a much bigger league. Um, but I think I, I think with Metcalf, you you do get that leadership. You get like really smart defensive play who can also get forward. Uh, offensively, but like I, I think with with this moment right here, like you can see, like this is just a a great ball from Colin Martin. That's what that's why Colin Martin is Colin Martin, right? He sees that. Um, but then the next the next highlight is Nick Moon, like basically running through f three or four. Look at this, like one, two. There's four around defenders. three. There's four defenders there, and the ball comes like. He pulled, like, talk about, like, this is the Miguel Berry diff. Like, look at how many people are being sucked into him. That when the ball squirts out, there's no more Red Bull players on the pitch. They just don't exist because they're all being sucked into Nick Moon, right? There's four guys right there, right? And then there's, comes a fifth, right? And, like, this is, so there's the fifth guy and the sixth guy, right? So there are six guys all watching Nick Moon. This, the 88 guy is like doing the smart thing of covering the striker, but then the ball squirts out and there's no more Red Bull player left. It's just, it's just among in the right position, right? This is where the and Red Bulls what, podcast just goes. Oh, what is our defense doing? Yeah. <laughs> ball watching. You know what I mean, like this is, this is why Red Bull are kind of a young team, right? They're, they're kind of ball watching. And then if it's an unfortunate bounce, right? This is the luck that, sometimes nate miller talks about right like it sometimes it's just luck it's a ball bouncing the right way and in some of these games it's gone against loyal at the end and this time it goes for loyal the ball just happens to bounce the right way because you put yourself in a position to score and this is why loyal flipped the script okay do you feel like they flipped the script like i i i personally did not appreciate 
as did uh, other people uh, from the San Diego Supporter uh, local base 109s. Um, they, they flip the script. Like, the script was, on is, paper, you were supposed to win. On paper, again, regardless of who was on the team, like, you know, you're supposed to kind of come away with three points. At the end, it does so, seem that you lost to the worst, like, yeah. on the table, the worst team in the league. Right? Like, so it does stand a little bit. You're, you're expecting a win. to not win against them. And this is like what yep, Nate Miller great. just mentioned, the expectations, right, that we have set on the team. At the end of the day, they did end up getting a point away in New York. That's a long way. I've never been to New York. How long is that flight? Um, three eight hours. Eight hours? Yes. Seven to eight. Well, when I went, it was seven. It was seven hours, but he circled uh, JFK for about an hour because the tarmac was completely full, and I was. I thought Alan said like three hours, or was it Tony right? <laughs> I said three days. Three days. Oh, okay. So it is like seven hours. Yeah. So it's basically, oof. it's basically like the Oregon Trail. It takes. Uh, Two and a half months. You have to for, ford some rivers. It's like a whole thing. And then I think Nate Miller, not to, to spoil it, but um, he Spoilers. mentioned that they were like sitting on the tarmac for a while. Yeah, you'll get an insight um, on what that travel has been like. Uh, obviously not playing at home since uh, April 16th. Um, uh, what that toll and what the strategies that they use. It's really interesting. It was a really inter- interesting conversation. You know, just getting to know exactly a little bit of the ins and outs of that. Um, but I'm still saying they should have won. But I'm glad that they're here back at home. Um, hey, be positive, guys. There are some positives. Again, 6.9 soccer telling us to be positive. Have you guys seen his stories? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty negative. Um, but it's fine. Um, also, you know, alluding to positives, there were a lot of positives from, from the team. More specifically, you know, the – coaches themselves Nate specifically even more specifically uh there are positives that are been ta- being taken and and sometimes we forget about that because yeah it's not it's not the best to lose a tie back to back in a in a way to lose but, a tie yes you know it's it, it, there could be worse situations that Lola can find themselves in yeah, absolutely and you know right now if we're looking at the standings it's it's fine it's we're looking fine. pretty positive Fine, I think fine is is a good you know term. Just oh yeah, it's good. It's fine. I mean, three points out of a playoff spot. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. it's not it's not bad. It's not bad. Can it's you also do like El Paso. Ha- you have two games on El Paso. Uh, Sacramento only has one, and they can only get to twenty two points, right? So they can have the same exact record, and that's a historically a great team. Uh, you know, Phoenix is struggling compared to their historical that negative five goal differential is absolute horse poop uh that's basically <laughs> that new mexico terrible game so like take that with a grain of salt um you know you're one point behind or you're tied with new mexico yeah they have a game in hand whatever but like if you're looking as far as like what's below you like you're clearly cementing yourself as one of the top four or five teams in the west and you know phoenix is losing their minds right now because they have six losses and thing like and they're talking about like some people were like we should fire the coach and see what orange county did but like orange county has the same amount of games played and they're at 14 points right vegas has one more game played they're at 16 like you have put yourself into a position to be successful moving forward like i think you know judge the team after the next homestand and see where we are like, I think we can be content with where we are right now. I'm like, not happy, like, but just content. Like, we should yeah. be over the moon, yeah. right? We're not like, mm-hmm. we're not, we, it's like, hey, we have 13 games played and we won nine of them. Like, it's also something to remind ourselves, especially us, you know, European fans, like, the great teams lose like three or four games and then they don't win their league. Like, this isn't European soccer. This is, you just get to the playoffs. Um, yep. I think, uh, we, we talked, I talked about this on, on Twitter. Um, people were talking about Phoenix and Devin Kerr said getting in though, all a team needs is a chance. Right. And that's what this is all about. And I said, it's not like winning the West has been historically great for teams wanting to win the cup anyway. And uh, yeah. the great Nicholas Murray says, yeah. since the USL championship went to two conferences in 2015, the team to finish with the best record in the Western Conference has yet to reach the USL Championship final in the postseason. So it's like it's not necessarily about winning your division, which is great, 
like that's great and all but like you have to peak at the right time and you know this is still too early to be like we're, we should be first place it's mm-hmm. like we should be in the mix and if you're in the mix you're fine right and so after this next homestand i think if things start to not go great that's when we should start to kind of question things uh but i think we have a lot to prove this homestand and if we stay positive through it then you don't get the oh this doesn't feel good like tony you're talking about the watch party or like hey this is where it starts to fall apart like there's things as supporters that you can do to have a positive mentality like we talk about players needing to have that, you know, mental fortitude. I think as supporters, we need to have that too, right? Because the players feed off of that. And if we go in there going, oh, here we go again, like the, the, the crowd kind of feels that tension and then the players feel that tension. So it's like we almost have to be goldfish to borrow another Ted Lasso uh, <laughs> uh, reference, Tony. Sorry, Tony. Um, I, I, it's like I, we, I get it. That's such a... Right. Okay. We don't just got to forget, don't, right? Don't. And if a goal goes in, we're, it's still nil-nil, right? We got to be like that weird guy on, on the Sunday league game where it's like, nil-nil, guys, nil-nil. Like, just keep that's me. pushing them that's forward, that's right? That's, and that's, cheering for yeah. them and bringing that added, positive attitude because I think they've been missing that. And I think that's what's going to help motivate the team in a positive direction. If things are getting a little tense i think they're going to feel that as well so we need as fans i think we need to be a little bit loose through this as well as far as like bring the positivity bring the noise bring the funk um and yeah 10th place or lower but if any if any if you've learned anything about the usl is the last place team can beat the first place team right yeah monterey bay has beaten colorado springs four to two this year like the standings don't matter. You, you play hear the Red game. Bulls tied against San Diego Loyal two to two. <laughs> right. You play you play the game and you treat your opponent with respect mm-hmm. and you go all out. And I think at the end of the games at home, I think San Diego end up in a better spot than they do on the road. Yeah. Yeah. So you fans out there, you guys be positive. Us as media. Us as media. We're we're gonna we're gonna critique everything. Yeah. And and Alan, Alan is on our side. Don't take him away. Alan's on our side. Yeah, no, I absolutely grill Nate Miller on. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Nobody does. It was it was a good con- good soccer conversation. I think even if you were to try, he would just clap back every single time with something. Yeah, no, he's he, he's not afraid of uh, you know little 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 spice, little heat. So he has time. To, he lives in East Lake. You think he has time to join my East Lake soccer league team? <laughs> Nate Miller can run around you. you oh, you, the whole team. All your friends. Like, yeah, just just destroy you. Uh, next match here is Saturday, June eleventh. Part of one of three matches in June at Torero for San Diego Loyal. Nine of the next eleven home games are of the nine of the next eleven games are home games. So it's a summer in San Diego. Un verano sin ti. Oh, ah. Do you like Bad Bunny? We do. You, do you listen to Bad Bunny? Yes, Bad Bunny Conejo Malo. Yeah. Is, is that like um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? He's he's a Bad Bunny. Underrated movie. A hundred percent underrated movie. The ride at Disneyland is the best ride that there was. Um, Not talking about and I don't rabbit. Like we're talking about Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. Um, six oh nine day actually. Six oh nine day. We're actually gonna go ahead and have a uh, giveaway, Alan. Um, a Father's Day uh, set actually from our good friends. Again I saw that at Calafino. So that's actually gonna be coming up. Um, we're gonna give it away as we did the jerseys. It's either you pick Tony, which is me, third person or uh, Chiva to win a uh, soccer quiz. If you choose the correct person, you get entered into a little spinny wheel of death and uh, and, and winnings. So you got to be part of that live. So, yeah, you got to come to that episode. Towards here's, the end. Here's what least. they could win, Alan. Look at that. Some blenders, uh, glasses. Well, we have it here. Calafino. Yes, we do. It's right there. Let's, let's, let's get it, Chiva. Uh, on top of this, Alan, on top of this, because it is a – Father's Day gift box. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and our, uh, we already work with our boy buddy Weston at San Diego Loyal who hooked us up with a pair of tickets uh, to San Diego Loyal's uh, six one nine Juneteenth uh, day celebration. As you know, Chiva holds right the bottle of Calavino, a little the nice shades. Uh, uh, the blenders. Nice. These are really good shades. I'm gonna try to get us uh, sponsored by blenders. Nice. Actually. Really good. Um, and we have some golf balls. Callaway golf balls. So uh, yeah. Now, if you were on brand, you'd take one of those out. You would yeah. only give away two. 
two it's, balls. It's not a bad idea, actually. Golf balls are so weird. Like, there's just such a weird Golf balls ball. are pretty pricey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're wild. Um, yeah, that's a pretty – I mean, I'm partial to knockarounds, and I know that's the team sponsor, but – I've 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 admired bl- uh, what blenders that was called yeah uh, them from afar Kyle uh, Kyle Vassell was rocking some of those this weekend uh, right. yesterday was rocking some pretty nice so let's blenders. get a, let's get a prediction and then I want to hear all about this ah uh, uh, yes all about this uh, barbecue BBQ that happened over at the Olympic Training Center uh, so hard for um, coming in Corey Hertog I think Corey Hertz, Hertzog I think scores. Hertzog scores. I, I think, think he scores one. I think Herzog either scores or gets a red card. I'm call, Carl said, I'm a father. Give it to me. <laughs> hey, man. Good luck if you enter. Uh, I do think San Diego Loyal are due for a complete just dominance game and where they actually get the result. I'm going to go with a 3-1 win by Loyal. Oh, 3-1 win. Um, I have to agree where there's just like a, just pent-up rage in San Diego Loyal that they need to just unleash. Uh, they've been here at home. They've I think we're going to see a Goal of the week contender. A goal of the week contender, just in general, for loyal. <sighs> Let's get a Jack Blake goal, man. Like I, I that's I, mm-hmm. I, I really now you got me thinking about Another that. I really Colin Martin banger, maybe. I really miss a a you know scored a lot of bangers. This I mean it's it's a uh, Charlie Adams. Charlie Adams is yeah. underrated when it comes to offense. Sometimes like he he's he's slow. Sometimes he's slow in the back. I think he's he, smart with the shots. He's he is very he's smart. Gonna... Um, but in any case, yeah. I think it's gonna be um. A two zero, uh, two zero, just so nice, he doesn't score. clean. Oh, uh, uh, you he's, said he's he scores offsides, but it's offsides. Um, I like that. <laughs> it's like I, ha, you thought. Uh, <laughs> um, he gets a penalty, he scores, but it's offside somehow. Um, some USL ref uh, tactics, but I think there's enc- encroachment, and so he has to take it again, and then he misses. Good question, um, Carl. What if Corey tries to fight Kyle? Well, Corey, it's nice I, meeting you. I'm sorry, but um, Kyle's just fucking like he will stone cold like, stunner him. Like uh, is it? It's a Larry from SpongeBob. <laughs> Larry the Lobster. The Lobster. Yes, <laughs> just buff as fuck. <laughs> That's yeah. Kyle. Herzog doesn't strike me as the fighting type. He fight. He strikes me as the guy who is like gets on your skin and then gets you to blow up and throw a punch. Corey and Hertzog's the guy holding the, the phone saying, world star. Uh, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go. So I think it's going to be like two, one. It's going to feel like super edgy. Cause you're like, Oh no, they're going to give up a last minute. And then like the 86th minute or something like that, the Jack Blake, he's, he's sub, he's late later sub. He comes in, the ball squirts him at the top of the box, and he just rockets one into the top shelf I hope to, to put him up 3-1 uh, and to comfortably seal the game away. Uh, and prediction. that would be flipping the script. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Take notes on that tweet, guys. Yeah, take note, uh, sentient uh, uh, soccer club. You can't see me. I like that. <laughs> Here, you got you to get this one now, Alan. Oh, n- another one. Got to get this one out, Alan. And another one. And another one. Oof. It's one of the Pass few wrestling references one. I know. Is Pass me the, my other one on the, the... on the couch. It's all good, Alan. If not this one, Alan, you can always just resort to. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. That one's bigger. Suffle. Which one do you like better? I don't know. Double champ. Double champ. What are you talking about? Double double. Um, Animal style. For I, Tony, it does not size does not matter for Tony. Uh, what? Excuse me. <laughs> what? Like the belt sizes. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, the, the, well, what? belt. My belt sizes do matter because then uh, I need to buy new belts. <laughs> oh um, shit. He is vocal. Yes. Uh, he's a guy that will sucker punch somebody and run away. Question mark. Uh, Corey. Meh, <laughs> maybe he's from Philly. All right. So. Scrappy, uh, Rocky was from there. You never want to underest- underestimate. He's a, always a puncher's chance. Um, all right, so Saturday was it Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. You had Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You had a pretty cool event happening over at the Olympic Training Center for season ticket members only. What we later found out was only full season ticket members, not half season, which was. Eh, I mean, you could have at least. You know, let them in for an hour. <laughs> I want to hear all about it, but Alan, before you start, you did 
mentioned that a lot of people miss Tony and maybe some mentioned me. I don't know, but no, mostly Tony. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Just makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. Landon was no, like, uh, Tony does not own season tickets. So he didn't go. Oh. Uh, I didn't go because I don't own season tickets either. <laughs> so we just felt we probably could have snuck our way in or managed a way in, but it just felt disrespectful to yeah. most of you who have season tickets and invest your money in it. Uh, we are investing our money for this team in another way. Everything this. here. Like this. <laughs> Everything here. <laughs> so we just felt like it was appropriate to not attend this event, and you guys enjoy that with your And live by curiously through you, Alan. Alan. Of course. What was it like? So parking was a dilemma, I hear. Not a dilemma, <laughs> but just different. Uh, it was just like I actually had to, like, look for an open spot, which is weird going to the Olympic Training Center and not having a completely empty parking lot. Uh, no, it was super nice. Um, they had some food. Um, I made some jokes about how I was eating cookies and a lot of the uh, the loyal select kids because they played uh, today. Yeah, uh, they played and they today. won. They won um, 1-0. Not surprising. Uh, according to uh, Coach Hall, they are the best team in their region. Um, I had a nice conversation about uh, – the academy program uh but uh no they were eating watermelon i'm like now you know the difference between a professional athlete and a chubby guy like me they're like no, no we'll eat cookies too i was like yeah but you guys like work it off i just like keep it on yeah and it's just um, like protein cookies like what like that how does it even make sense protein no it was um it was fun um there was uh some cricket was being played so a lot of the uh european and uh the Kiwis, is that the non-offensive term? I don't know. The guy from New, New Zealand were out there bowling. Charlie Adams the ones are still, bowling. The, bow, the ones still bow down to a queen. What yeah, I mean, I don't blame him for that. That's yeah. not their fault. Um, but it was, it was like <laughs> super chill, super relaxed. Players were like in normal clothes as opposed to like after a game where they're like in bu- like their business or before a game where it's like business. It was like, it was legitimately like a laid back environment where hang out. you can come up and, and hang out with the players and get autographs and chat with them. And Such a dope it was just, it was, it was a way of really connecting to a team in a way that we haven't been able to in, in a really long time because of extenuating circumstances. Um, what I have liked to see, and I think maybe it's like, hey, we're going to do season tickets uh, because we want to keep it a little bit smaller for that reason. But, you know, I, I think this is this proved a concept of, you know, the kids had something to do to run around. The adults had stuff to do to run around. Um, and, and I mean, they had burgers and hot dogs. So it wasn't like, you know, gourmet by any stretch of the imagination. But I don't think that's why anyone went right. There are people out there like banging in free kicks in the school right here. Uh, people passing the ball around. There was like a five aside, six aside game with some of the staff and and the people who showed up, which was super fun. A little oh, bridge you know park moment. Um, so it just it was, it felt really good to re- reconnect with the team and, and really get a chance to chat. And I think it meant a lot for the players as well to get kind of that that cup refilled. They've been on the road a lot. They haven't been able to to touch base with the fan base. I think for them too, it was really kind of a cool moment to be able to interact with the fans in a way that they haven't really uh, in a really long time. Uh, so I would encourage Loyal to do more events like this. Um, I would like to see more than just the full season ticket members. I get that's a benefit for being, buying the full season yeah. tickets, but it's like a lot of people can't afford a full season ticket. And a lot of people, it's like, I can afford it, but can I really go to that many games? It's, it's, it's a long season. It's a lot, a lot of commitments. So it's like, you know, I'd like to see some of those half season ticket people show up. I think they were trying to get a TV down there to throw on the USA Uruguay match. And so maybe there's like a watch party element of some sort of soccer game where you can like, you know, chat with players about what's going on and get their perspective. I think, I just think it was, it was really well done. Uh, it was really well organized. There was clear pathways you can get there and back uh, pretty easily. They had trams or little golf carts for people who didn't want to walk, like kids and older people. I, I just think it was a, it was really well done, uh, really well done. Uh, and I think that they're looking at ways of making it even better for next time, which is not surprising. It's kind of what the team does, right? They do something and then they say, how do we make this better? Um, so uh, big ups to the team for doing it. 
um, and, and the, for the, the players to, for being there, right? Like this is a Sunday. They've yeah. just been on the road a lot. They didn't have to be there. They probably had to be there, but <laughs> they don't have to do those events. And they, I mean, the players stayed like, it wasn't like they were like, Oh, we made an appearance by like most of the people were leaving and almost every single player who showed up was still there. Wow. Uh, and at like three, three thirty. Um, so it really clearly meant a lot to them. It meant a lot to the player, uh, the, 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 the fans and the kids getting to take pictures and sign autographs. It was just all around a really fun afternoon. Uh, and I should have worn sunscreen. I, I think that's the difference between a team in the USL uh, with a community that cares like San Diego to maybe any other team, MLS or not, right? Like the players, these players do care about their, their fans. Like that, it may not be yeah. tens of thousands of fans. Yeah. But the few that are fans means just so much more to these players. There is that, you know, city connect where it comes to like, all right, cool. Well, are you a fan of the city and or are you a fan of the team or are you a fan of the players, right? So that's three different levels. But the fact that, you know, even if the team itself isn't doing the best when it comes to the community, like actual, like not just, hey, season ticket members, but like getting out there in the community this year, like it's a little different. The players are still there. The players still care. Yeah, and the fans are still there, and they want to meet the players, and they want to get that experience because it is a really cool experience, and um, it's it's really cool to be able to see uh, that interaction. And, and like I said, the player, like you guys said, the players enjoy that too, and um, it, it's part of – I think it's a benefit of being a professional soccer player, right? Like, you know, yeah. getting okay, asked for your autograph. Was, yeah. <laughs> that was something that Koke actually spoke. I asked him about it, like, hey, like, obviously you miss Spain, right? He's like, yeah. I miss Spain, you know, friends and family, but like he said, the weather here, the environment, the passion for the game, the fact that it's like international, right? It's, it's San Diego, but it's all, you have, you know, the Mexico being right there and, and then that kind of cross culture. Mm -hmm. And he said, it was he said, there's a, a lot of places to play in the United States, but the, I don't think there's a better one that I feel than San Diego. Like for me personally, like I love that. the people, the supporters, the culture itself, the passion for the game. He's like, it, it, it's such a cool experience. Like, yes, I miss Spain. And, but like the weather is very similar and the culture is very interesting to me. And, and I think that is what, why a lot of people are attracted. A lot of players are attracted to San Diego. It's a quality, it seems like a quality franchise that takes care of their players. Uh, that's why the guys keep wanting to come back. And new players keep wanting to sign here, and the weather's great. Um, and so, you know, Koke nailed it on the head, right? Like in his, in, in, like I don't know, like I need to ask him like how he's learning English because I need to learn Spanish as fast as he's. I, I was about was to like, say that, like you got a lot out of Koke for his limited yeah. Sp uh, English when he when we well, last talked. Surrounded about. every day by and just trying to speak that language. No, every day. but like. Try to say environment, like try to convey I can't environment. Even say environment. That's what I'm saying. Like try to convey environment and 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 all in culture and all that in in, a, in like I don't know Korean. Like it is pretty impressive. Good good, good on him. Um, I'm just gonna start speaking to Alan in Spanish. Any other notable interactions with any players for you, Alan? Yeah, I got a chance to uh, Cam Riley uh, was an interesting conversation. It was very similar. Like he's like just the amount of the people you can run into and the diversity here. It's not like where I grew up in Texas, where it was like the same people over and over again. Uh, Jack Metcalf again, had a great conversation with him about kind of the history of the league. And, and I think that's, what's great too, is you have these young guys who are going through the Academy program and really talking about what the way USL is right now. And you guys got, you got guys like Metcalf who have been through when the league was offering like $0 contracts and stuff. And so he, he's seen the league Why? grow. And so it's just, it's it's yeah it's super wild to be able to go and really like pick people's brains and, and talk football and talk you know life and you know I, I met Jack Mac, or Jack Blake's family and they were great and you know get, uh, talk to him about you know Nottingham uh, getting back in the prem and so it's just you can have whatever conversation you want to have because there's younger guys there's older guys with families there's guys who've been through everything uh, and there's guys who are just starting out and so it events like this you really get to know the players as people and to me that makes it even better to cheer them on when they're on the pitch is because now you're not rooting for them you know jack metcalf or jack blake the soccer player you're rooting for jack metcalf the human right you want them to be successful and then when they go off and do something else like a miguel berry you're rooting for them to continue to be successful because you've made that connection with that person as, on a human level not just a guy who happens to be wearing a, a kit that you 
the of the team you support. And that yeah, that that's that's really cool to to hear. I Chris here said that uh the barbecue was awesome. Cole, his son, had a great time with getting drilled by a ball in goal. So <laughs> did you, did you witness that? <laughs> I did. I witnessed that. It was, no. and he, it was, it was adorable. Cause he did like the kid thing where it like hit in the face, smiling and then breaks down. Um, no, it, it was, I, it's a, yeah. That's not, uh, man. I, I'm glad like the kids got to have a good time. The adults had to have, got to have a really good time. The no players. snake sightings. No, Oof. no, everything's everything fine. There's a lot of snakes out there. <laughs> No, but the eventful part is one of the golf carts like rolled down one of the hills a little bit and got stuck, and so it was just like up there the whole time, like just stuck on the side of the hill. So that was like the the big event was this golf cart being you, kind of abandoned on the side of the hill. <laughs> Did you get to meet Peter, the mannequin? Mannequin, Coach Beto. Peter, the sentient mannequin. No. Wow, you do not know about Peter. So uh, he's not on Instagram. He's, yeah, he's not on Instagram. Damn it. So uh, Coach Beto, the kit man for San Diego Loyal, has these bouts with uh with a uh, what do you call those? It's uh, like the the dummies, like the, the free kicks, the free kick dummies. Yeah. So there's yeah, yeah, one yeah. part. There's one particular dummy named Peter, who was a very mischievous, and uh, he ends up in 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 in, in he has a wild whole, places. He has a whole adventure series on Instagram. Yeah, no, like he goes in actually. Shout out to Coach Beto because uh, you need to get on Instagram, if anything, just to follow him. He did a uh, 20-part plus, like, little, like, 10, 15-minute uh, second clips of a day in the life of a kit man for San Diego Loyal. Yeah. From clock in to clock out, from <laughs> laundry to to him eating lunch oh, to the times. Like, I don't know how I'm going to get this ball, but I have to go get it. And it's in the middle of bushes in a nest of snakes. Yeah, I, I, no. I, uh-huh. I did ask him if he was chasing balls yesterday, and he was like, nope, that is not me. I'm here <laughs> just long enough to get the laundry. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, man. Like, good for you. You need a day off from running into the bushes to, cl- to collect all those balls. That's the point, because there's rattlesnakes in there. That's the point where I'm like, you know what? This is a great job, but if I see one, like, here's my two weeks. Not even two weeks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. I hate, I hate I'm not a fan of snakes, Alan. Yeah, um, Tony's a big baby when it comes to, <sighs> to snakes. Well, I think we're very positive, especially, you know, hearing Nate Millard speak to us after, uh, just like a couple minutes ago, about about 50 minutes ago. And, and I think we're in a good spot with San Diego Loyal. What do you guys think? I think so, man. I think I think it's going to be brighter, especially this summer. Uh, just having a lot of home games. It's going to be great to see everyone back at Torero. Almost everyone. <laughs> I hit my elbow. Uh, Alan, I'm going to miss you on Saturday. I haven't seen, I seen am, you in person. I'm going to miss you guys as well. Um, I, I think I think after people listen to Nate Miller and the interview, he brings up a lot of great points um, and probably says them better than we could have said them. Yeah. Um, and... I think our expectations are so high. And I think he speaks to the, the coaching staff. The expectations are so high that when, when you don't meet them, it does feel a little bit like sad, mm-hmm. but like we're, it's a long season and we still have room to grow to meet those expectations. And, you know, I, I am hopeful that for, for the next, you know, nine out of what 10 or nine out of 11 games that, you know, the team is going to meet those expectations more often than not. And I think people are going to feel good. And don't go with speculation because, again, we have an insider in the fact that he is the assistant coach. Like, what more <laughs> insider do you want for San Diego Loyal than the literal coach of the team uh, having some time um, and offering it to us to talk a little bit. But, Alan, I hope you enjoy the hell out of you deserve that pineapples, location. coconuts if they have them over there, just teriyaki chicken, um, uh, flame dancers, hula, ho- hula hoops, and hula dancers. Um, I don't know. I assume they originated from Hawaii, right? It's Hula, never good to assume Hula anything, hoops. Tony. Um, well, you can find that out for us, Alan, uh, <laughs> on your uh, voyage over there. Let me know how it is, and let me know. Let me know the itinerary. I've, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. Let me know how how that went, and then prices and stuff. I'm I'm very interested. Um, All right, <laughs> but um, enjoy that, Alan. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna go ahead and. Talk about the other San Diego team, and then Mexico sucking because oh. we suck, Alan. Oh. oh yeah, I saw that there was it was not a nil-nil draw against Uruguay for L three. 
<laughs> but hey, sure. it's like June. You're trying some stuff out. Like this isn't like September is the the the, the friendlies that if, yeah you yeah we really can be positive about, about loyal. I am not going to be positive I'm, about Mexico. I'm, I'm very happy that the that the World Cup is not in the summer because this gives <laughs> us time to try to fix and salvage something from this. But I mean, and the way the way Argentina is playing right now, I don't think it matters at all. Yeah, like that they're ridiculous. Oh, so. God. Uh, yeah, Talks. enjoy that international soccer uh, and the wave. I will let you guys know if I will be there on Wednesday night or not. Um, yes, but please. I, I'm leaning toward it. It's Pride Night for SD Wave, and uh, I should be there to support that. So uh, have oh, a good man. night, gentlemen, and we may see you Wednesday. Laters, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, Alan. Again, we say it every week. Alan is the best. He's the best. The bestest. Um. All right, I should probably. I don't want to talk about Mexico. Hold on, let me, let me, let me finagle this. Mm-hmm. Oh, his uh, little box. Oh, what? 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 Because if I, because uh, again, I need to edit that Nate Miller thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Just making sure everything is taken care of. Cool. Whew. Awesome. Oh, nice. Um, San Diego Wave. Uh I don't know. It hasn't been very, very good for San Diego teams away, Tony. It hasn't been for, for a while. Too, so um, much that you even tweeted about it. Yeah, I don't tweet. Um, <laughs> I hardly ever tweet. Uh, but definitely a um, hard-fought uh, game uh, where they have been away, just like San Diego Loyal has, but not that long. San Diego Wave hasn't played at home in a bit, in a while, but they have their last away match before coming back tomorrow, not tomorrow, well, tomorrow, depending on when you're listening to this, on Wednesday, where they go, are going to go ahead and have a Pride Night, as Alan was talking about. But mm-hmm. they did travel to Kansas City, which is, by the way, located in the city of Kansas City. Yes. Um, we went to a watch party. We went to the San Diego Wave watch that was party. Great. They met, um, we met uh, SD Gritty, we met uh, Sirens, Sirens. We, you know, we got, Numbers. where's my sticker? Where's my Siren sticker? Don't the stop. Oh, I have one in my, in my Oh, room. I had it here. I was going to post it right now. I was going to get That's it. That's right there. No, there it is. There it is. You got I a have sticker. my Siren sticker. Yes, sir. Oh, I got a Sirens. I'm going to put it over here. Uh, so we went to Home and Away to watch this game. Um, to be completely honest, um, I really enjoyed the game. Uh, Home and Away has some really heavy pitchers of alcohol. They really do. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. La Sirenas. El Valle de la Sirenas. Uh, Remember that song? Oh, oh. No. Oh, me suena. La, kind of. Oh, el, la, la, el, el I don't Valle know. de la Sirena. Interesting. Anyway. um, Let's talk about this game real quick. Or just, you want to talk about the watch party first? Let's let's uh, well. I mean, we we'll talk about I'm both. So sure it was it was a pretty good watch party. The turnout is different, yeah, from from other games. But it's yeah. um, it's it's really enjoyable. I like it. It's a good atmosphere. Good people. Um, Especially if you're able to find like a decent seat, uh, not not behind tall people. You're very tall yourself, but still. Yeah, no, I was I was adjacent to the screen, so I was in a good position. But um, what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? Anyway, I was pretty. Pretty lit uh, for that game. Oh, wow. Um, Whoa, language. Lit. Language uh, for this But this, this is the lineup of talking about Sandy Wave. Uh, going up against um, Kansas City, you have, obviously, La Numera Una Portera, uh, Sheridan in goal, Naomi Gurma, Van Eggman, Jody Taylor, Alex Morgan, Kristen McNabb, Kaylee Real, Tegan McGrady, Kristen Westfall, Taylor Korniak, and Bell Bree. Three of the starters who were in the team of the week for the last week. In the NWSL, Alex mm-hmm. Morgan, Korniak, and Naomi Girma. Uh, good to see in the bench, Amira Ali. Amira Ali, who uh, picked up an injury after her first start. But, again, she's pretty good off the bench and, and is exactly what they are, uh, game changers. So, And then when you have Sofia Jacobson also being able to come off the bench, she was changing the impact on the When game. your 10 can come off the bench, and it's, it's not necessarily a double standard because we were scrutinizing last year – uh, Alejandro Guido, who was like, when are you going to play a full 90? You're coming off the bench. Like, yeah, it's, I don't know if it's a, if it's a double standard in that sense, but there's just so, so much talent on this wave roster that mm-hmm. you can do that. You have the ability to do that. Now you're going to go ahead and come yeah. back. I after. think Casey Stone is just rotating very well. Yeah. Like, not everyone all at once, just some players that maybe need a little extra rest more than others. Mm-hmm. 
And I think she's doing a very good job of doing that. Um, and so, yeah, so this is here, the, the lineup that they had and the positioning. Um, I, I, I like the, the form that San Diego Wave has because that leaves uh, Alex Morgan to, you know, it's, she is. What's up? It's very interesting with Cornea because you see her and then you, you just think that's a defensive mid. Yeah. Just because she's very tall, she, she has a long reach and just is able to press really well. She reminds me of a prime Matic. Yeah, a long, so very defensive holding midfield. And when you see her up on top and just being aggressive and high pressing and just out muscling everyone, it is very impressive. And again, you don't want me to say impressive, but I'm just saying impressive because of the the style of this player. It doesn't really match the height that this player, this player's height, when they're that in that height, they're normally yeah. center backs or defensive mids. And this is actually what uh, Seattle uh, OL Reign had done. It was neutralize, neutralize her. Even the first half here with Kansas mm-hmm. City, they did a pretty good job surrounding her with a couple of extra players marking her because they realized that she's so fast, she's so strong, she's so imposing that yeah. they're, she's going to – because that's what it happens. She usually takes possession of the ball, dispossesses the other team, turns around, moves forward, pass here, pass to Alex Morgan, and boom, she's clear for a chance. Or she turns herself and give it to Morgan, and Morgan will create something out of nothing. Yeah. Um, but team that's of the month, a, correction. Team of the month, yeah. yes, correction. Think it's Even better. Soccer. Um, but um, it didn't start – all that good. You start, uh, you know, down a goal with case uh, with KZ scoring, uh, and again in this game. Piece. Oh, by the way, yeah. By the way, I have never seen so many drums. Like, oh <laughs> yeah! If there's anyone from the chavos or the locals or the sirens, look at this watching. demand drums like. They, they they are selling them like hotcakes over there. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's, congratulations to you! Like they're putting in their shift for the drums. That's at least ten drums. That is at least ten drums. Um, but again, uh, what's going on with San Diego Wave when it comes to set pieces? And I had actually asked Casey Stoney last game mm-hmm. uh, where they lost, uh, where they didn't lose. They no, they didn't. They, lose. they, they, lose they lost rain. the game against Rain, and the week before that, they also had a, a goal on a set piece. This week, they have a goal on a set piece. Uh, against them, so it's like, what's going on? She did pretty much say like, we're, we're going to work on this. Like, there, she was not happy about it in the post match conference when they asked her about it. Uh, I was going to ask her first, but unfortunately, well, it, wasn't it first. happened again, and it did happen again. But they were still managing to move forward with it. They're still managing to get results as far as like points. Again, if you're looking at the other side, looking at the other games, positive. Pointage is, is better than negative pointage. And so yep. uh, they are moving in a positive direction. I'm pretty sure if you ask Casey Stoney, hey, do you want to, after this, you know, hard, difficult road um, road road games, still being in first place, losing cup, losing one, tying in the way that this, but would you be happy with that? I'm pretty sure she'd be happy coming back home. Um, and then so you get scored on 11 minutes into the game and then a little bit before halftime. You get a set piece. Mm-hmm. And I just told you, oh, you know, I, I feel, I, I think the goal's coming. And you said it. He I, said like, this verbatim, in front of people. Verbatim. There's witnesses. He said, oh, if it's a penalty, yeah. Yeah, no, like if it's a penalty, the more, yeah, Morgan's going to score for sure. And a handball happens right here at this moment in the set piece. Chaos is created. Um, and of and, course, and who's the penalty, penalty taker? Uh, Penalix. Penalix. Hashtag. Penalix. Pen Alex, if uh, Ronaldo oh, gets uh, shit for it, then That's... Alex Morgan should get shit for it too. What is that? Three, four PKs? Yeah, so he has eight goals and four of them. Three, I don't want to say Three four, four? four penalties. Yeah, four penalties. So uh, here's the actual shot. Lefty shot. Cool, calm, collected. I mean, it's I, 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 I can stop. I can stop an Alex Morgan penalty. I don't think so, dude. I don't, the way I, she I, just passes, she's like almost like I don't know, George. She's just like I don't so calm, so, like I, uh, she's she's just cold blooded from the spot. Yeah, she definitely and honestly, is. That's, uh, it's, the it's goalkeeper do, uh, was actually playing amazing, lights out, was not letting Wave score at all. Yeah. Uh, so I think had she not had a performance like she did, San Diego Wave would have come out with uh, the victory here. Um, but in any case, Sofia Jacobson does come on uh, later on in the game. Uh, a play does occur back and forth. Oh, wait, by the way, they got scored on from another set piece. They got scored on, but yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. boo. Same story again. Same old story. And so, it was not looking good. Uh, it was two to one, but again, here in the dying moments, as I said, 
Uh, Sophia Jacobson gets a ball. Uh, she's going on the right-hand side. Takes a little bit of an extra touch uh, to pass it into the middle to Alex Morgan. And she the, gets the, the ball. through ball to Jacobson. I told you, man, how did that ball just go through? Yeah, let's look and at that, actually. Because mm-hmm. the pass just didn't really Ooh. seem like it had much, but it was just a perfectly placed pass by Ma- Perf- Van Ekmond. Perfectly and uh, weighted. Everything was great. And you have the feeling that Jacobson is just going to finish that and just – Gets the cross into Alex Morgan, which manages to get a touch and then finishes and just manages to get the tie and goal. And uh, you could tell they wanted to win this game. Shout out they Nick Duffy, it. who just joined the chat. Uh, half By the way, in this game, I get it, Alex Morgan. You want to celebrate with your teammates? Just run and get the ball and then put it back in the middle and try to save some <sighs> never, minutes. Never satisfied. Never satisfied. Uh, we did have um, Sofia Jacobson. And, uh, because, again, we were at the watch party. And so we again we met a lot of people and I'm like you know what I'm gonna just do it right here and uh, l- let them see what we had. Try the computer. The hotspot was just not working. Just Data would have been better on the phone. Not cooperating at we all. We made it work. We made it work, Tony. And I mean, as you guys know, Tony's the face of the plot here. He's the pretty boy here. So we need to have him on camera <laughs> at all times. I, I'll mention it during the Casey Stoney, but like. I had a high production value of three phones on me at the same time. Yeah, you really did. How's it going? Um, so can you prompt us and walk us through that uh, last-minute equalizer? Sophia, you grab a great pass. You make a run. You take an extra extra step to cross it over to Alex, and Alex uh, getting that ball in. What was the uh, you know what was the feeling getting rewarded after a hard-fought game like this? Mm-hmm. I think it was like obviously it was down. Uh, two to one and uh, to be able to score that two so was important to go home with at least one point and uh, yeah Alex is a real goal scorer and showed that once again so yeah happy about her performance but also the the point we got obviously job number one for Alex is being a mom of course and we know children as because we work with them sometimes they don't cooperate with you okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Um, I, I'll, I'll follow it up a little bit. Obviously, I'm here with the background of San Diego Wave. I'm here at the watch party in San Diego. A lot of people coming out. Uh, can you tell us what you guys' feelings are about coming back home and playing after such a long road stint? You don't want people to see you. Uh, you can go. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said before, like we're just really excited to get back in front of our home fans. Um, it's been way too long. Um, I don't ever want four away games in a row again. Um, you know, on, not only was it tough on our legs and a lot of miles um, flying around the country, but um, our fans give us energy. Um, we want to kind of be able to um, feed off of that and, you know, continue to get wins in front of our home fans. So we're very, very happy to be back this week. Safe travels. Thank you. Always wish safe travels. You think the reason they had so like a long stretch of away games, four straight, is just to maybe have some more extra games at Snapdragon? Probably, right? Probably. And I mean, is... that would be that would be smart. <laughs> oh my god, I hadn't seen this. <laughs> is it the light? It's the lighting. I hadn't seen so, the lighting. So it got dark because the sun already went down by this time. Uh, it took a while for Casey Tony to get there. There was some elevator issues. Yeah, she got stuck in the uh, elevator straight up. So. <laughs> It's kind of dark, and I go, and I go to Tony, you know what? You need light. You need lighting, man. Let me put my flash on you. Show it. It, Does it look better? Um, Just want to talk a little bit about, obviously, this road trip coming to an end. Uh, Could you speak to the maybe competitive advantage now that you have here at home at Torero? You've been seeing some other teams away and the support that they get. Do you feel like you have an extra edge here in San Diego? Uh, And are you looking forward to that, especially yourself and the players? We love being at home. We've got our home fans, our home crowd behind us. It's our stadium. You know, I think we've generally performed reasonably well there. Um, we are coming off the back of a lot of travel. We know that, but we've got to bounce now. We've got to cover well, and we've got to put in a good performance on Wednesday at home. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm confident that we can do that. You know, this is a strong group. They'll be disappointed tonight, knowing that we can play better, um, but. You know, they'll, they'll build confidence, the fact that they've, they've not come away with, with nothing, which is important. And then here in San Diego at the watch party, we just heard about an elevator incident. Everything okay with that, so Coach? Dumb. Yeah, that was me. Just took forever. We're all yeah, good, though. Yeah. Everyone's, <laughs> everyone's okay. You got a smile out of Casey's Tony, Tony. Uh, oh, Casey's Tony, man. Tony. Wow. 
Casey Stoney, Tony. Tony got a sm- Tony got a smile out of Casey Stoney. Um, but yeah, so that was uh, the post match conference. San Diego draw off a million games on the road. Oh, the the boy Nick Duffy. What happens <laughs> when the stadium's not ready? Um, uh, oh, Nick, we're we're gonna drop an interview with Nate Miller, uh, and you're gonna like and it, and you're gonna love it, man. You're gonna like it. I know. I, like I just it. know you are, man. Are a lot. Um, so yeah, so they come back home here, and they're gonna play on Wednesday, the first uh, weekday game for San Diego Wave, as they remain atop. Ah, hello. They remain at top of the table uh, with 13 points, uh, with uh, Houston being behind them. They had a difficult game against Houston at a way they did beat them, so that's that's the difference right there mm-hmm. so far. Um, but in any case, if you want to go ahead and catch San Diego Wave, catch them at Torero Stadium today with your ticket purchases at your very favorite place to get tickets for San Diego Wave. I don't yeah. know how to... So they have a game on Wednesday against, uh, uh, was it Portland? Portland Thornton, and that is going to be Pride Night for San Diego Wave. It's going to be a huge event. Everything's going to be happening. I believe Colin Martin is probably going to make an appearance in that game. Yeah, because they had a, they had a, a little, cool little video with yeah. Sheridan. Uh, so it'll be been 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Shout out to San Diego Wave and the changes that they're making here and there, starting with not threading the, com- the, the tweets yeah, that during people the game day. That. Little things like that. Uh, so uh, you can really tell that, this, that, that some stuff has picked up. Um, in 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 ways that you know you might not be able to see, but on the field the product is world class. Like like that's the thing. With San Diego Wave on the field, world class. Um, there are some world class individuals uh, working for Wave. So uh, six nine soccer says, why can't they have an actual Wave background instead of a green screen effect? They do have a Wave background, but that's just for home games and uh, yeah. training. Yeah. It, it it's it's a big thing, like the low one, and it would just be annoying to take it and travel somewhere. Yeah, no, it's it's just inconvenient. Uh, so, yeah, so that is San Diego. But then they also have a game. Did you mention about the game on oh, no, 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 I didn't. Sunday? Sunday, 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 the San Diego Wave. Yeah, so it's kind of like a doubleheader at home for San Diego Wave. They also play Sunday at home against Olympic Rain, and it's going to be the team that just they just lost to a couple weeks ago. And they have last been. Last Sunday, actually. They have been here in San Diego for the Challenge Cup, so it's a team that um, uh, that – San Diego Wave is not unfamiliar with uh, Kristen McNabb, mm-hmm. who was a very important part of the Wave uh, team. A uh, former uh, o- OL Reign player um, knows that team pretty much back and forth. It's a team that San Diego has not been able to beat. They lost twice to them and tied once against them. So this is definitely a game that the players are circling the calendar because they want to beat this team. Absolutely. So I think that's it for soccer in San Diego. I think we're going to have to turn our eyes to somewhere else. No, they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. Mexico pierde. Mexico loses uh, in f- friendlies. Like, w- what's going on right now? So there's no more it's, Champions it's League. There's World no Cup more Premier League. My guy. It's World Cup preparations. I see some. My guy. My guy. I see some uh, teams that are playing the Nation League, but we're not. Like, what? what so Mexico. That's, I think that's the European. That's the ones. European yep. ones only. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Mexico uh, loses against Uruguay. Um, Yikes, you guys are losing 5-1 to the Mets. Just saying. It's the best team in the division. In the, in the, in the, yeah, no, sure. it's all good. Um, yeah, so Mexico faces Uruguay. And Ooh. the lineup on paper, I don't know. He went to a three-center back line, which Tata Martino hasn't done. So I, I'm guessing he's trying things out. These are the games to try things out, right? I guess. This is, these are the games for trial and error. I personally prefer to have the solid lineup be playing in these games prior to the World Cup just to get the chemistry up going. But he starts Talavera on goal. Then he starts, which I get Talavera doesn't even have a team right now in the Mexican League, Tony. Yeah, it was wild. He like, doesn't even a have a team agent, right he's... now. And he's starting for the Selección. When you have other great goalkeepers that are starting in their teams and just being dominant. But it, whatever, Tata. I get you. So so let's look at this. Uh, this, little, this ah, the ears. Um, let's look at this, um, <laughs> at the Uruguay team too. Like, it, you know, there's not a bunch you, of bums out there. No, you have notably like world-class players. You have, uh, you Jimenez, from Madrid, Jimenez. Jimenez. you have Araujo Mat- from Barcelona. Matias Vecino is actually really good. Yes. Who ended up, you know, scoring the goal. Um, Valverde, who literally just won the Champions League, like literally Feliz just three. won the Champions League. And then you have my boy, Edison Cavani, oh, who's boy. also a free agent. Yeah, you know who I saw link uh, Toros, uh, Toros, uh, Toluca. To Cavani, I saw Monterrey, but That's they, they can't afford his salary. 
It's it's ridiculous how much he gets paid. But uh, the lineup: Nestor Araujo at center back, Cesar Montes. Yes, please give me those two center backs anytime. Uh, if you have to start someone else, Johan uh, Johan Vasquez, right? You start Angulo from I believe he plays in Tigres, uh, and. Google's wild. You put Jesus Angulo, and then they show you, like, the different player. That's not supposed to be him. But you start Angulo, and so you have that three center back line. <sighs> that, he's just so <laughs> this is This is, Martino. This is this no, this like, like, the commentary is, like, like suffering with us. Madre Santa Vecino! Madre Santa Vecino! Oh, man. It's, it's just wild. So you have Sanchez uh, playing right wing back, which normally he doesn't really play. He's just a solid right back. You have Arteaga playing left wing back as well. Arteaga's fine. He plays in, he plays in Greece. I, I would want him to start, right? Edson Alvarez and Guti Gutierrez in the center mid. Guti Gutierrez was playing a little more behind Raul Jimenez. Edson Alvarez has to be the solid start, right? You agree there, right? Edson Alvarez has to be the... Yeah, he's the guy. Yeah, he's the guy. You start Alexis Vega, who needs to prove himself that, he needs to be, that he's able to play with this team. Raul Jimenez, who has not been the same since that injury. I'm sorry. He's just... Has not been the same. Yeah, no. Salvador Cabañas played better when he came back from his head. Oof. Yikes. Yeah, but no, I mean, it's, it's true. It's very, I mean, it's, it it's is true. The same. So either, either something else happens, like Raul Jimenez has to trust. He has to be the guy, but he needs to step up. If he's not stepping up, I don't know if Tata has the balls to just even put someone else up there. Uh, on, it's someone like Chicharito. Odds on Chicharito making Santi the World Jimenez. Cup. Santi Jimenez. Odds on Chicharito making the World Cup. Like, al Chile. Like, will Chicharito be in the World Cup? I, I think it's a 40%. 35 to 40 percent. Then what is he waiting for? I, 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 what the fuck is he waiting for? That's the thing, right? It's it's too late to change things. Like, if you were to fire Tata right now, who would you bring to change something? There's only one man for the job. Who? Who's the man for the job for you? El Vasco Aguirre. <laughs> ah, no, I mean, World Cup experience. Some people say with mm. Tuca Ferretti. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say maybe just try to bring Piojo on a contract just for the World Cup. Uh, I, I don't think Tigres will allow that, but Piojo, I would love to have Piojo for the World Cup. But at the end of the day, I think it's too late. And it's also too late for Tata to bring in new players to try to fix things. He did mention, like, he doesn't want, he didn't want the Atlas players in there. There's players that are dominating the league right now and are not being called up. They're not given the chance because these players already have. The trust that Tata wants to give him, right? And again, I don't know if it's the league just pondering down on Tata saying, you need to call Tecatito, you need to call Acha Acha, you need to call these players because they're going to generate more money and people are going to buy tickets and we're going to sell out the stadiums either way, whether we're winning 3 nothing or getting destroyed 3 nothing. They're going to sell out the stadiums either way. Yeah. yeah and, and that's the problem at first. Right? I think as money. fans, if we want to make a big change in the selección, it's going to have to go with change. stop going to games. Especially here in America, because this is where they make the big bucks in games. Gonna make the but chance. realistically, will that ever happen, Tony? Absolutely no. not. People are going to go to the games. We're going to want to go to the games either way. Uh, so you start Tecatito, who also Press didn't passes. have the best performance. And it's just, uh, yeah, Santi Jimenez, dude. He's he's, he's youngster. He's just good. Uh, but, yeah, again, I think it's too late for Tata to bring anyone else new that has, he has not been bringing up. It's just it's getting to the border edge line that it's too late. And then you have Mexico struggling like this, Tony. And you have other teams that are in our group. No, deja de eso. I don't care about our fucking group right now. The fucking U.S. tied against the same team. That's what bothers me. Yeah. That's what bothers me. Like, that's mm-hmm. literally what bothers me. Oh, free real estate. No, it, it, I don't got... Chingan, chingan su madre. Look, me vale verga. Yeah. Like, that's what bothers me is the fact that the U.S. tied against the same Uruguay team. Different circumstances, different whatever, different planteamientos, different different lineups, don't, different it don't schemes. Matter, though. Shouldn't matter. You don't both matter, have world class players. I mean, you, Raúl Jiménez, Tecatito should be world class. They have should be starting. Uh, Edson uh, Chicharito could be on there, but then you know, just it's just not going to be pretty in the World Cup. I already it really know is it. Not. It's it just really is not, not. going to be pretty. 
Um, like you always have that sense of hope going into a World Cup that oh, you know, imaginémonos cosas chingonas. Oh, then you beat Germany. Oh, la madre, But even like now, it doesn't really feel like that. It doesn't, and uh, I've and never. And it kind of sucks. I've never been as disillusioned going into a World Cup as I have with this Mexico <sighs> team, and that's yeah. not a good thing. It is really. Um, really not. Speaking of beautiful things, though, this is beautiful. Yes. It's to a point where even fans from the other team are saying, shit. So Ukraine played Scotland in a World Cup qualifier qualifier. So whoever won this game would play against Wales. Depending who wins that game is the, who goes into the World Cup, into the group of death, I think. Right? Uh, is that the group of death? The Maybe. U- the U.S.? Uh, the U.S., England is in there. Mm-hmm. And somebody else. Uh, we'll look at it right now because we're going to make World Cup predictions. But yeah. um, but yeah, so the entire other team, as we <laughs> continue with the uh, Ukrainian national anthem, uh, stronger together. That's a pretty, pretty strong... Um, Messages right there, and so images uh, from over the weekend, over the over the last week. They end up winning this game against Scotland. They go and play against uh, Wales, and the goalkeeper for Wales turns into Thibaut Courtois and does not allow the dream to happen of Ukraine playing in a World Cup. Yeah, Bouncing they ended up scoring a own goal off a deflection and a free kick by Gareth Bell. Gareth Bell somehow, when he plays for Wales, it's just... It's the same Gareth it's Bell. It's God as mode. This, yeah. yeah. It is God mode Gareth Bell. It's prime Gareth Bell. He's... It's like he loves soccer again when he plays with Wales, and he mm-hmm. goes club Madrid, and he's like, "Well, I'm a golf player." And as uh, we were talking about earlier, Argentina winning the finalissima, the Copa America champion versus the Euro champion, which is a pretty cool concept, uh, putting them together and yeah. seeing who wins. But like, you know, it's just a one-off game. It's like a Super Copa, like a Champions League versus Europa League. Like, eh, I don't know. And then one team isn't even in the World Cup. Uh, this this tournament, you know, this trophy kind of seemed a little like just rushed by FIFA just to maybe give Messi another trophy with Argentina or a chance to win another trophy with Argentina. I can which, see that. Uh, it's no secret that FIFA just and UEFA just really likes Messi and loves Messi and wants him to succeed as you would w- want when you have when he's one of the best players arguably in history of the game, right? But yeah, they made up this tournament or this game called Finalissima which again, like you said, the concept is amazing. Uh... And Argentina just looked really good. Yeah, that is the group of death. Nick Duffy, uh, Germany, Spain, Japan, and Costa Rica? New Zealand. Oh, uh, oh, I mean, one of the one of the one of those powerhouses is gonna go ahead and make it to the World Cup. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what so, that was. So Argentina are just looking deadly right now. And then Argentina play Estonia, and Messi scored five in this game. Uh, but just imagine the the comments that Mbappe had made before about South American teams that. They don't play these tough European teams to qualify to the World Cup all the time. But then you have these powerhouses in Europe playing Estonia in a World Cup qualifier who Messi just completely destroys, single-handedly destroys them with five goals. Uh, I don't know, man. Food for thought there. Let's just... I think the favorites for this World Cup is gonna, it's not going to be a European team. Yeah, no, I think it's going to go to South I America. I believe the actual favorites are Brazil. Yeah, and Brazil, awesome. and I think Brazil's going to win. Brazil is, a, uh, is always that, that team that's always in there. El pentacampeon, the five-time champ, 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 champ. With, with, with the hot run that they're going into right now, that's kind of how Italy went into the Euros, and they ended up winning that mm. with a bunch of games undefeated, uh, like unbeaten, and right now Argentina are at 33. Mm-hmm. They managed to get to, like, 36, 37. I don't know how many more, more games they're going to play before the World Cup, maybe, a, like, six, seven more games. If they get to, like, 40 unbeaten games into the World Cup, I think it's going to be really hard to stop them. And the only thing about this Argentina team that you really don't see before, there's a lot of youngsters in this team, right, Tony? Yeah. And these youngsters, whether they're 21, 22, 23, they grew up watching Messi. Mm-hmm. By the time these kids were like 12, 13, Messi already had like three Ballon de Oros. Yeah, so which is insane. They're sharing a locker room with their idol now. So not only are they like excited to play with him, they, they're they playing with con más huevos. Yeah. They're playing with more passion because they want to see their idol get a World Cup. And if Messi gets a World Cup, there is no denying that he is the greatest player of all time, right? Like, that that's that would be the cherry on the top for that argument. 
You don't Unless think so? Ronaldo. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. if Ronaldo yeah. wins. But if Ronaldo wins. Oh, man. If the, if the, if if the wins. final is Messi, Ronaldo, dude, it's just. Here's everybody taking a picture with Messi, as you were saying, like, they're idols, right? Like, here's yeah, a yeah. trophy. Every team, every th- like the substitutes, todos, todos, todos. So I mean, he now technically has two trophies with Argentina compared to Ronaldo one with Portugal. <laughs> so, best in the world. Argument can't be made still, but best in the world is actually something that yeah. Argentina are scary. I I really don't. Mexico does not stand a single chance against them, against them in the group stage. Imagine if, the, Im- imagine if Mexico wins. I can't. I can't. I I can be hopeful. I'm going to be hopeful. I'm going to be delusional. Uh-huh. But realistically, it won't happen, Tony, unless we see a significant change. Like, <sighs> very pronto. Pronto, pronto, pronto. Uh, Canada's a shit show. Mm-hmm. They're not playing their friendlies because there's arguments. The players want to get paid more money, and they're refusing to train and didn't play their uh, their. Pre World Cup like warm up matches. Love it. So Canada just being the best team out of Concacaf this year, going into their first World Cup in ages, are just shitting the bet right now before the World Cup. So yeah, they're not gonna get out of Belgium. That's uh, Concacaf for you, man. Right? Um, Sorry, let's. Do let, you want to well, make this prediction? Let's not yet because it's not complete, and it bothers me. Because <sighs> just New Zealand or Costa Rica is not there, even though it's not gonna affect anything at all. Because they play on the 14th, I believe. Nick, when do they play, sir? When are we cheering for New Zealand? He's he's trying to get the... He's trying to get the... uh, That brewery, what's O'Brien's, to show the game. It's on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. I have it right here. They play Costa Rica on Tuesday the 14th. Tuesday the 14th. All right. What time? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. All right. Um, so, uh, speaking about best in the world, best in the world is actually something, and we'll close with this. Uh, CM Punk, uh, the current slash former AEW world champion of uh, WWE fame. Speaking of uh, AEW, former uh, wrestler for AEW, Cody Rhodes, uh, had a match at Hell in a Cell, uh, which is a big structure, and you've seen Hell in a Cell. I've showed you Hell in a Cell. Yep. But I just want to show you. How tough these motherfuckers are. The Seven losers. two Mets. <laughs> what? The Mets are up 7 2. This dude just wrestled Hell in a Cell with a torn peck off the bone. Is that why it's all like purple? Yeah. Ooh. Like that was before the. How match. recent is this? Yesterday. Wow. Like yesterday. Oh, oh, that's painful, right? Like yeah, actual br- painful. No, like it's the muscle tore off the bone. Like it tore did, off did, the did bone. He, win? he won. Holy shit! In hell in the cell with one arm. Oh um, shit! Talk about goats. Oh no! Whoa! Oh, that'll get watched later. Um, but in any case, want to go ahead and say thank you. To the great Alan Underwood for everything that he does here for with us at Two Balls Underwood. Keep an eye out for our giveaway of Calafino, Calafino Tequila. Use promo code Two Balls Twenty at checkout. Get twenty percent off. We're gonna go ahead and raffle, not raffle, give these away uh, as we get closer to six one nine. It's a great day. Father's Day gift, man. Great Father's Day gift. So get on that. We want to say thank you to Smog Express and PB European Imports, two of our homies that have great car shops. You need a. Oil change, you need a smog check. Some brakes. Pacific anything. Beach, go for it. Ask for Coach Alex, Alex and Alex. One is the son, one is the, one is the father. Alex They're Senior, both Alex Junior. Exactly. So want to say thank you to everybody who's been checking us out. We've been growing. We don't need Russian bots to yeah, pump we, our numbers we don't need up on Instagram. fake followers on Instagram. Hey, this is Tell Nizzle. Um, but <laughs> <Elsa>. <laughs> 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 I hate myself for that. In ben any case, thank you for guys for everything. Uh, the Nate Miller one will be dropping on Wednesday. This will be dropping obviously tomorrow. Uh, pray for us because we are going to be in the sun for eight hours for 30 days straight this summer. And, uh, it's not going to be a pretty sight. Thank you guys for everything and everybody. You guys. Appreciate you guys. You guys are the best.